It was incredibly hot that day in town. Breathing was difficult for many people because the air was very stuffy. Fortunately, yesterday, the big holidays began, and everybody was able to do so, went to the country or to the beach. So did Mrs. McDonald. Where are you? She called impatiently. Laureen, Lionel, Lucy, come on. If we don't leave now, we will get stuck in the worst traffic jam ever. We're coming, Mrs. McDonald, they shouted out of the house. Just a minute. Come on, Lucy. We always have to wait for you, Laureen said, who was Lucy's mother. I can't find my damned hairbrush. Don't say damned, Laureen moaned. Who have you learned these expressions from? From Mrs. McDonald, Lionel Lucy's brother grinned. She says it often when she thinks she's alone. Don't say such nonsense, Lorene said strictly. She has never spoken one of those words in her life. <laughs> Lucy and Lionel giggled because they knew better. If you don't come now, I will go to Acapulco alone, they heard Mrs. McDonald calling. Well, Lorene sighed, but don't you think that you're getting out of being brushed? We are going to buy a new brush on the way. Lionel and Lucy rushed out, but Lorene stopped them. Lucy, Lionel, you must walk slowly and demurely. You aren't street cats. You are beautiful and well-educated domestic cats. Unfortunately, Lucy and Lionel laughed. Here you are at last. Everybody get in, Mrs. McDonald called. Oh, I'm so happy to get out of this stuffy and noisy town. After Lucy, Lionel, and Laureen had made themselves comfortable in the car, Mrs. McDonald raced off and was in a better mood. Lucy Lionel, have a good time, the birds twittered. We will have a lot of fun in Acapulco, Lucy shouted gladly to them. Bye-bye, Mrs. McDonald, Rosa called. Bye-bye, Mrs. McDonald called back. Relax well, the hedgehog waved. Lucy and Lionel were glad because Mrs. McDonald had a convertible, so they didn't notice the great heat too much, and the trip was very pleasant. By the evening, Mrs. McDonald and her cats reached Acapulco. They had rented a house for the holidays there. As they were getting out of the car, Lucy tried to run away. I'm going to have a look around. I'll be back shortly, she said. No, Lucy, you have to stay here, Laureen ordered. First, we have to unpack. Lionel, you go help your sister. Lucy and Lionel shrugged their shoulders and went back to the car. Lucy has this thirst for adventure like her father, Lorene said worriedly to Mrs. McDonald. He was a real vagabond, but very charming, she added, sighing. Yes, yes, men. Mrs. McDonald smiled, and the two giggled like schoolgirls as they went into the house. After dinner, Mrs. McDonald and her cats realized that the journey had been very strenuous. Everybody was tired, and they all wanted to sleep as soon as possible. Good night, my beloved cats. Sleep well, Mrs. McDonald said. Good night, Mrs. McDonald, Laureen, Lucy, and Lionel answered and fell asleep immediately. The next morning, when Lucy and Lionel awoke, Laureen and Mrs. McDonald had already prepared breakfast. Slurping, they drank their milk hungrily. Lucy, Laureen said strictly to her daughter, listen to me. This morning, the milkman told me a cat catcher roams around in this area. He likes to catch beautiful and cared for cats like you. Don't cause any troubles, dear Lucy, and stay nearby. This is proper behavior for a respectable domestic cat, Mrs. McDonald added. But that's really boring, Lucy complained. 
Poor Lucy, Lionel said compassionately. He himself didn't mind just laying around in the sun, loafing and reading. Hmm, that's a fun idea, isn't it? She thought as she disappeared sulkily into the corner. In the shadow, Mrs. McDonald and Lorene had made themselves comfortable and soon they fell asleep. When Lucy heard the two snoring, she carefully snuck up to Lionel. Hi, Lionel, she whispered very quietly. I'll go out for just an hour. Lionel looked shocked. And the cat catcher? Lucy, that might be dangerous. Don't worry, she said. I can take care of myself. I'm just going around the corner. Okay, Lucy, but you have to be back before Mama and Mrs. McDonald wake up. Otherwise, we'll be in big trouble. You can trust me, little brother, Lucy whispered lovingly and ran away. Lucy was shocked. It's five o'clock already. She ran back to the cottage as fast as she could. Where were you for such a long time? Lionel asked her. <laughs> Mom has blinked and she'll wake up soon. Out of breath, Lucy rolled up, closed her eyes and pretended to sleep. It was about time for Lorene to wake up. And Mrs. McDonald was rubbing her eyes also. After a short, suspicious look at Lucy, Lorene blinked to Mrs. McDonald, satisfied. Well, you see, at last, Lucy is becoming a good little cat girl. Mrs. McDonald was very happy. Oh, dear, Lionel thought, if they only knew. Quickly, he ran into the house so nobody could see him blushing. Next day was spent much as the one before. As soon as Mrs. McDonald and Lorene had their afternoon nap, Lucy had another investigation tour. Please come back earlier this time, Lionel called after her, but Lucy had already disappeared. She was walking along the street cheerfully. Suddenly, she saw a little mouse which was dancing in front of her teasingly. Hold on, I'm gonna catch you, Lucy called. But the mouse disappeared like lightning. Just try to catch me. It giggled and looked around the corner in a cheeky way. I'll get you, Lucy called and started for a jump and... Ha ha ha, Lucy heard a deep mopping voice. What a nice cat we have here. That's what I call a successful cat. You may hiss as much as you want. You won't get away from me, the cat catcher laughed. Well done, Judy, he said to the mouse. At home is a nice piece of cheese waiting for you. That's your reward. Meanwhile, Lionel was waiting for his sister's return impatiently, full of unrest. He was running to and fro. Lionel, Lucy, where are you? Oh, dear, that's the end, Lionel thought. Here, here, here I am. And where's Lucy, Lorena? Mm, I, I don't, don't know. She was just here. Lionel was stuttering. What's the matter, Lorene? Why are you looking so angry? Lucy has run away, Lorene said angrily. Tonight she will go to bed without a meal. Don't be so strict, Mom, Lionel said. Certain cats need more freedom than others. But this is not acceptable. I forbade Lucy to go away, and she has to learn. Lorene was hissing and went back into the house full of anger. Your mother is right, Lionel. You are not just anybody. You're well-educated and intelligent domestic cats. Oh, Lucy, Lionel sighed. You make things so difficult. There you are, my dear cat. I hope you will feel happy in my palace, the cat catcher said to Lucy as he turned around and stamped away. Then Lucy heard the door bang loudly and the key turn in the lock.
Oh dear, I'm in an awkward situation. She mumbled desperately. She was looking around. She was alone. There was nobody around who could help her. In the evening, a little bowl of milk was pushed in. Hungrily, Lucy drank the milk, and although she couldn't have believed it, she actually fell asleep a short time later. I'm getting more and more worried about Lucy, Lorraine said to Mrs. McDonald. It's getting darker and darker, and we shouldn't forget about the cat catcher story. Oh, poor Lucy, she was caught. Lionel started crying. Before we get too excited, I'm going to call the newspapers and ask if the cat catcher is still in this area. Lionel and his mother ran restlessly into the room. Bad news, Mrs. McDonald said with a hoarse voice when she came back. A man noticed that cat, who looks exactly like Lucy, and he was caught by the cat catcher. My poor child, Lorraine moaned and started to cry, and also Mrs. McDonald shed a tear down her cheek. Full of anxiety and worried about Lucy, nobody closed an eye that night. Hello, my beautiful miss. I never guessed to find such a charm inside these dreary halls. Bemused, Lucy blinked the sleep out of her eyes. Who are you? she asked and turned up her nose. You look like you haven't had a bath for a long time. Well, don't be so unkind, the top cat said, insulted. There are cats who are not spoiled by their mistresses and masters. They have to learn their living by themselves, and I'm one of them. You spoiled princess. Sorry, Lucy said. Were you caught also? Unfortunately. It was my own fault, though. I was so hungry, and a suddenly a cute little tempting little mouse just in front of my nose. The same thing happened to me, Lucy sighed. Do you have any idea what will happen to us? Well, if you live in the streets like me, all types of things can happen. Don't keep me in suspense. Tell me, Lucy pressed. The beautiful and well-behaved cats like you are sold expensively. One says, if you are lucky, you will get a nice family. But I already have a nice family. I don't want to be sold. Lucy hissed, outraged. The tomcat shrugged his shoulders. I could imagine worse things. Ignoramus, Lucy hissed. But the cat catcher probably has other plans for you. You are not beautiful or well-behaved. The tomcat grinned. You are right. A mangy cat like me won't be sold to a nice family. No, I have to go into a laboratory for animal experiments. Into a laboratory for animal experiments, Lucy asked dreadfully. Yes, I guess there I should try to eat the best I can. What's healthiest for me? My goodness, Lucy said. Do you know what really happens in the laboratory for animal experiments? You will be killed. My brother Lionel, who is very educated, has got a book with a lot of pictures of these laboratories. The animals are teased until they die. Open, open, I want to get out of this place. It doesn't work like that, Lucy said. We have to find a better idea. Uh, by my way, my name is Lucy, and yours? Uh, my friends call me Charlie. Big Tomcat introduced himself. Sorry that I freaked out just now. That's okay, Lucy said. If I were you, I'd want to get out of here. Let's think this over. Lucy and Charles huddled closely together and whispered very quietly. Fantastic, Charlie laughed. I see you're not just beautiful, you're also clever. Lucy was flattered. When can we put this into action, Charlie asked. Immediately. We shouldn't lose any time, Lucy said strictly. Go on! Help! Help! Charlie asked. Help! What's the reason of this fuss? The angry cat catcher said as he plodded into the room. Look! Lucy's ill! I think she's gonna die! Oh, help! Shut up! This little lady is shamming! The cat catcher said, although he was a bit restless. I haven't done any of this. The fifth cat becomes ill. I can't sell her. As Lucy had earlier thought, the cat catcher bent over. At that moment, Charlie jumped up and bit into the cat catcher's bottom. Ow! Ow! He called and held his hands protectively over his bottom. Just for a short moment, he completely had forgotten about Charlie and Lucy. Let's go home, Lucy called running. Will you come with me, Charlie? Miss 
Mrs. McDonald, Lorraine, and Lionel stood sadly in front of the house and watched the street. Let's go back home. These holidays are ruined completely for me, Mrs. McDonald said. But maybe Lucy will come back, Lionel protested. Oh, Lionel, but you heard. Somebody saw the cat catcher taking Lucy away, Loreen sighed. Now come on, you two, before something happens to you as well, Mrs. McDonald said. Just at that moment, when they began to drive, Lucy and Charlie came. Stop, stop, Lucy called. Stop, hold on, hold on. But neither Mrs. McDonald nor Lorraine nor Lionel heard her. They were too far away. Damned! What should we do now? I'll never find my way back by myself, Lucy cried. Well, princess, don't cry now. We have already survived the worst thing. You can't give up now, Charlie said to Lucy. But I don't know the way. It's too far to San Francisco. We will make it. Maybe you will look untidy when we reach your family, but your mom will nurse you back to health. But Lucy sat down irresolute. Come on, Lucy, child called. You have to learn to know the world one day, and I promise you we will have a lot of fun. Slowly, Lucy's thirst for adventure came back. Okay, Charlie, let's go. I like you much better this way, Charlie laughed. <laughs> one of these. You should see how fast they will run away, Lucy said confidently, and then she hissed to the dogs. But this time they didn't run away. They yapped back at her. Okay, it didn't work, she said to Charlie apologetically. You have to learn a lot, Lucy, he laughed and turned to the two dogs. Listen, you two, from tramp to tramp, we're going to San Francisco. Have any ideas of how to get there quickly? You're going to Frisco? Well, forget the train. They find every stowaway and bring them to the animal home, said the smaller one. Damn, Charlie said. I had a lot of fun traveling on trains. Yeah, yeah, but times are worse, said the older dog. I guess you have to walk. But be careful from the main streets. The car drivers are thoughtless and you have difficulties to survive. The other day, a friend of ours, he was run over. Oh, that doesn't sound too good. Anyway, thank you, Charlie said. Okay, take care of yourselves, the dog said. Lucy and Charlie left the main street and walked across the fields. <laughs> Look, a hay wagon. We can ride on it for a while. Why are they in such a hurry? The mole wondered. Isn't this comfortable? Lucy was glad. At the farm, the farmer was waiting for the wagon. He would unload before darkness. <laughs> Everything's okay? He asked when he stopped the horse and the donkey. Sure, the donkey said, and the horse neighed a ring. Let's start, the farmer said, and pushed the pitfork into the hay. Awa! Lucy cried with shock. What's going on there? Two stowaways. The farmer was astonished. Wait till I catch you. Hey, wait, Lucy, wait, called Charlie. We already shook off the farmer. Trembling, Lucy sat down on the floor. Did you see that? He poked me. For sure I'm hurt very badly. Nonsense. You just had a giant horror, Charlie grinned. I don't think that's funny, Lucy said excitedly. Tell me, how should we carry on? I'm hungry. We may have a problem, Charlie said and looked around. There are only vegetables here. There's a fact. We have to eat vegetables today. Vegetables? Are you joking? Lucy was outraged. Vegetables aren't bad, little bunny nibbled beside them. Come on, I know a great field of turnips. Not far away. Turnips, Lucy groaned and rolled her eyes. We have no other possibility, madame. With pleasure, the bunny chewed a big carrot. By this time, Charlie already had a carrot in his mouth, too. Mmm, not so bad. I've had worse food other times, he said. Lucy sat in a bad mood and wouldn't eat anything. 
Well, princess, it's not my problem, Charlie said. If you want to starve, that's your affair. But I would like to meet your family. And if you die of starvation, this won't happen. Lucy hissed at Charlie angrily, but finally took a carrot and started eating. First timidly, then more and more greedily. I see you like it, the bunny said proudly. Had enough to eat? Around this time, nobody comes here. Yet, before Lucy and Charlie could say thank you, the bunny lolloped away. Time to sleep, Charlie said when they had eaten enough. Immediately, Lucy agreed. Quite satisfied, they cuddled up together under a bush. When the sun raised, the two went on. Soon Lucy's paws hurt her. If I have to walk the whole day, I would like to have something delicious to eat, she moaned. Nothing comes without doing something, the tomcat said. So let's try to catch some mice. But as much as they tried, they didn't succeed. Suddenly, Lucy said, over there. Only a short distance away, there was a little squirrel sitting on the ground and laying out in the sun. Okay, Charlie said. I'll count to three, and then we'll jump. Okay, Lucy said. One, two, three, go! You counted too noisily, Lucy complained. It's gone now. You must be very hungry if you want to eat squirrels. Although it's true, we haven't eaten for some days, Charlie confirmed. Go to Mario's. He's the world's best cook. There, you will get leftovers of meat as much as you want, and simply the best, the squirrel suggested. Leftover meat? Delicious! Lucy exclaimed excitedly and ran away. You have to go straight, to go straight ahead, the squirrel called after them. Ristorante da Mario, Lucy spelled reverently. There, Charlie whispered and pointed towards the garbage cans. Without looking, Lucy ran on. <laughs> Damn, Charlie cursed. Because of her greed, she ruined everything. Startled by the noise of the gooses, Mario came out of the house. Hurry up, Lucy, we have to leave, Charlie called. No, no, Mario stopped them. I love cats. Are you hungry? What would you like to eat? I have a wonderful tuna pizza. Tuna pizza? Lucy sighed and Charlie licked his lips. It's just the last minute one, Mario said. But the bon appetito. Fantastico, Lucy said when she was finished. If I could walk back home to San Francisco with any blisters on my feet, I will be the happiest cat in the world. You want to go to San Francisco, Mario asked. No problem. Down in the harbor, every ship goes to San Francisco. And the captain doesn't look for stowaways, Charlie asked with doubt. No, no, no. Has more important things to do. Believe me, it's easy. Lucy and Charlie said thank you and went on their way to the river. Good luck, Mario called. They had good luck. They found a ship that was just casting off. Everybody was so busy, they didn't even notice two stray cats. Lucy and Charlie found a wonderful hiding place where they made themselves comfortable until they arrived in San Francisco. For many days, Mrs. McDonald, Laureen, and Lionel sat sadly in the living room. Oh, I don't feel like greeting visitors. Laureen, please go and tell them I don't feel well. Laureen stood up and went to the door. We don't want to buy anything, Laureen said when she saw two neglected street cats. Don't you recognize me? Lucy asked dumbfounded. It's me, Lucy! Unbelieving, Laureen stared at the little dirty cat. Lucy! Lionel called happily. Mom, it's definitely Lucy! Now Laureen recognized Lucy too and was beaming with happiness. Mrs. McDonald! Mrs. McDonald! Lionel called very excitedly. Lucy is back! And who are you? Laureen asked Charlie. 
Charlie is my name, madame. I'm delighted to make your acquaintance. Without Charlie, I would have never been able to escape from the cat catcher, Lucy told them. He is allowed to stay with us, isn't he? If he helped Lucy, he can stay with us as long as he would like, Mrs. McDonald said happily. In some ways, he reminds me of Lucy's father, Lorene whispered to Mrs. McDonald. I think if he washes himself, he would look very handsome. Do you really want to stay with us? Lionel asked enthusiastically. Well, I would like to get to know your family for a few days and then we'll see, said Charlie with restraint. Well, do that, Charlie, but you will see. You will like my family very much and you won't want to leave. Lucy smiled and looked very amorously at Charlie.